Welcome back everyone, my name is Davin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about 10 tools or technologies which every Java developer should know. Now of course when you talk about Java developers it might be a fresher or you have experience of 1 to 10 years, doesn't matter. What's important is in this duration you have worked on different projects. So in those projects you might have used these tools or technologies but still it's my job to list that for you. Even if you're a fresher, it's good for you if you know these technologies because it will be easier for you to get a job. And if you're experienced, this technology will help you to be more productive. So let's start with it. Now when you say Java developer, we normally work on a backend, right? It may be a web application, it may be Android. So we normally work on backend. Now when it comes to web application, we write the middle logic. So we create those middle layers, we talk about DAO layers, controllers. But what about front-end? Of course, that's important because the web application is incomplete without design and that's where we have designers. But what if I say companies are normally going for full-stack developers where one person should know both the technologies? Maybe you have a different team for designing, but it's good if you, if you know the front-end part as well. When it comes to front-end, we talk about HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But with that, you need to also work on front-end frameworks. And that is, that's where Angular and React comes with picture. Again, you can choose one, you can learn Angular, or you can work on Angular, you can work on React. Both are good, I don't want to give uh, any preference here, but then that's your choice. Go for Angular or go for React. But if you know any of them, it will be easier for you to work on web application. Now, same goes for Android. You have to also learn about user experience. That is something you, uh, you can explore more. So UI, UX part, but the first point here is Learn the front-end part as well, which is Angular and React. The second one is when you work on a project, of course, we have to also build the project, which is creating the jar file, creating the var file, and also manage the dependencies. I'm talking about jar files here. So what if in your project you need certain jar files and you also want to create a jar out of it, the project which you are doing, or maybe you want to get a var file. And that's where the build tool or build management tools come into picture. So basically we have two famous one. Yes, we had Ant before, but now we have two famous. One is Maven and second one is Gradle. Uh, yes, Maven is old where it uses XML and trust me, we are not a big fan of XML, but I prefer to work on Maven because I'm working on that from a long time. I feel more comfortable. But Gradle is getting very famous. Yes, it's very new, but still it's, it is getting famous because it, it doesn't work normally with XML. So if you work on Android, by default, I guess Android uses Gradle as a build tool. But the project which we work on, they're mostly on Maven. So that's fine, right? So you can also work on Maven or Gradle, but use them. If your project is still working on normal legacy type, change that and move to Maven and Gradle. It will help you. Now, based on your experience, you might have worked on different IDEs. And of course, Eclipse and NetBeans are quite famous. We also have some other IDEs available. In fact, I'm a big fan of Eclipse, so most of my projects have been on Eclipse. But if you want to increase your productivity, I would suggest you to start using IntelliJ Ultimate version. Yes, the community version we have, but then it doesn't support the enterprise part. If you want to use them or try to use IntelliJ Ultimate version. The only problem is it's not for free. You have to pay for it. And that's when you have to decide. Do you want to save your time or do you want to save your money? Okay, I'm not saying Eclipse is not good. Okay, so I work on Eclipse a lot. It's just that if you have more experience, of course, your development time is very important now. So you want to utilize your time properly. And that's where if you start using IntelliJ, it will help you in increasing your productivity. So let me give an example. Last, last week, I was working on a project. I was using Eclipse and AWS. Uh, it was a different version of Eclipse which I was using and suddenly I was getting issues with AWS. There was a small bug which I was not able to solve it and ultimately I was not able to solve that. I was supposed to get a new version for Eclipse and make it work. It worked ultimately but then I wasted two or three hours in that. That's what you have to decide. What is important is your time or money. I prefer time is more important than money if you're an experienced developer. Okay, so as a developer we focus only on development part but then think about this. We have a concept of debugging, right? So now what is debugging? Debugging simply means removing bugs. If debugging is removing bugs, what is coding? It, it is adding bugs, right? So the more code you write, the more the bugs you add. And trust me, as a developer, we feel you know everything will go well, but yes, there are bugs in your system. Of course, we do have testing team to test them, but what if the basic thing can be tested by yourself? In fact, every class which you create should be tested. Every method which you create should be tested, and that's where unit testing comes into picture. 
Now, one of the best framework for unit testing is JUnit. So make sure that you also learn JUnit because it will help you to test your software so that you will be having less bugs in your code. Okay, now how can you improve your productivity mode? Of course, using better IDE, using testing your project so that you will not be having any bugs. But then if you follow a particular framework for a particular work, it will help you to build your project faster. It will help you to also maintain your project. Now for different type of scenarios, we have different frameworks famous. But there is one framework which is getting famous a lot, which is used by most of the companies now, and that is Spring Framework. So I would suggest you to also learn Spring Framework if you are working on Java. So Spring will help you in a lot of different features. You know, it will, you, you just have to write less code. It will give you a lot of features in build, and it will also help you to maintain your project. Plus, you know, in, we also have a concept of Spring Security. Security for your project is very important, right? Example, you will be, uh, there are a lot of hackers, they want to hack your applications and Spring security will help you in that. Now, if we talk about the internet world, the web world, we used to have websites before, but now we have services. Example, if you have your website, if you have your application and you want to have a payment gateway, you don't need to build the payment system. We can use external payment gateways. Uh, you can connect with the payment gateway services and they will provide their service to you with the help of REST. These two services can communicate with the help of REST and that's where you can build REST services or you in general we can say web service. But then when you build a REST service, you also need to test them. You need a client with you and that's where we have different REST clients available. One of my favorite is Postman, so you can try that. So if you want to improve yourself as a developer, learn REST and Postman. Okay, so we are talking about all these things, right? We are talking about you have to build projects, you have to test projects. But there's one more thing. Every time you add new features in your project, you have to maintain the versions. And yes, we maintain the version by saying, you know, uh, the final version, the ultimate final version, and this is the final, final, final version. But it's better to have numbers and it is better to have a system where it will manage all your source code. And that's where we have this amazing tool, which is known as Git. To use Git, we can also use different hosting services or guest hosting services. We have GitHub, we have Bitbucket. You can try them, right? So I would suggest to start with GitHub first and then you can explore the other part as well. But learn Git and GitHub, it will help you a lot. Example, if you are working on a team and you want to share your code with people, you can also use Git. You can also take help from the other contributors. So you can make a project open source and other people can help you in your project. That's where Git is very powerful. In fact, Linux, the Linux kernel source code is available on GitHub. We you know thousands of people, they contribute to Linux through Git. Okay, now, if you heard about this concept as DevOps, a lot of companies, they are changing their culture from normal development and operation team to have a DevOps team who will be responsible to do everything, building the project, deploying the project. And that's where we got this new thing, which is CI and CD, which is, as a developer, you don't have to merge your project at the end of the week. It should be done daily or maybe two times in a, in a day. Example, before going for your lunch break, if you're typing a code, make sure that you commit your project with the other project. So let's say we have a big project here and this is your small module, which you have done in the morning. Just integrate it before the lunch. Before going home, again integrate it. That is continuous integration. You don't have to wait for a weekend. After integration, you can also deploy it at the same point. So there is continuous deployment. But that is something which is very amazing. You just don't have to, every time you commit to a project, it will be tested automatically. Okay, that can be done with some tools. Example, we have Jenkins. But then also explore on DevOps, CI, CD and Jenkins. It will help you in your project. To know more about CI, CD, we do have a video. So you can check description area. You will find all the videos here. Now it's time for something fancy, which I'm not working on as of now. But still, I've heard about this a lot. Every time I go for a training in the company or if I talk to my friends in the industry, they have this thing in their mind. You know, they want to work on Docker or they are working on Docker. So Docker is something which is helping a lot of projects projects to take the project as it is on the server. Trust me, it is very awesome. But okay, the only thing is I have not worked on it. That's why we don't have a video on Docker. But soon I will try to make one video on Docker, which talks about what is Docker, how exactly we have to work with that. But if you get time, if you have the opportunity, learn Docker. It's, it's very important. Last but not the least, which is cloud. Of course, right? When you build a project, you have to deploy your project somewhere. Yes, you can use private servers, you can have your own server, you can go for shared hosting. But nowadays, everything is moving towards cloud. The advantage is cloud services don't just provide one service. Yes, you hosted your service there, but what if you want extra features? And that's where cloud provides you all those features instantly. 
Now, which service to use? Of course, you can go with any cloud service. We have Google service, we have Amazon service. In fact, Red Hat, they have their own service. Even Microsoft has it. Uh, but Amazon has the market share, right? They covered a lot of market in the cloud world. Uh, so I would suggest you to explore on AWS. In fact, most of my web services are hosted on AWS. You can try them out. The amazing thing is the cloud services like Amazon, Google, they provide you one year free trial, maybe one year or they will give you some great points. So you can use them, you can try it out. If you like it, just start using it. So if you get the opportunity in your company to learn cloud services, to learn AWS, do that. Yes, they also provide you certification. In fact, not just AWS, but most of them, they also provide you certification. Should we do that? Yes, you have a choice. You can go do certification, company will trust you. Otherwise, build projects and deploy on them. That's how you will also learn. So your choice, you have to get certified or not, but make sure that you learn this technology and start using them. And that's how you grow as a Java developer. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section if you have any more questions. And let me also know how much you're liking this type of videos. So that's it everyone. Bye-bye.